Welcome and hello. This is an interview with Bruce Dickinson. And you can hear it in my voice. I'm quite a little shaky, but I mean, it's such an honor to finally meet you. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> After I, I built a big uh, introduction like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Here Do you arrive safely here in Germany? Oh, yeah. I was in Sweden for a couple of days. We yeah. were doing some similar stuff, talking about the album and everything. Everybody's very excited. So it's good. So that's the reason why we are here. We want to mm -hmm. talk about the new album. Yep. And um, the new album is called The Mandrake Project. Yeah. When did this creative process even start? I guess it's years ago. No. Um, yeah. The, well, the, it's a weird thing. The creative process never really stops, but uh, it sometimes we just get it together and focus <laughs> it. So, so 2014, <clears throat> I was making a, a, a proper start on trying to do a, a, another solo record because Tyranny of Souls was the previous one before mm -hmm. that, and that was kind of in limbo. It was not really. Didn't really have any way, we had no way of promoting it because I was so busy touring with Maiden. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know what, we must get around to doing another one and then maybe we'll have a chance of getting out and promoting it. So I was with Roy in 2014 and we did a bunch of demos of songs. One of them was If Eternity Should Fail, mm -hmm. which was going to be the title track of the record. Mm -hmm. And I was already thinking about um, a comic, a graphic novel yeah. as, uh, uh, to, to do with the record, but just a one one episode of a comic. Um, and it, I mean, if Eternity Should Fail, the title actually comes from a Doctor Strange um, episode mm -hmm. comic. So I created a, a rough basic storyline. Um, and then at the end of if eternity should fail, I I thought, well, I wonder what it sound like if there was a like a, a narration on the album. I'll, I'll just make something up. So I made up the the bit of spoken word at the end of the track just to see what it sounded like. Um, anyway, Maiden decided to use the track, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And they used a the spoken word as well, which I thought was a bit odd because I'm like, mm. what? You don't know mm. what it means. I'm not even sure I know what it means, you know, <laughs> but it sounds and see what oh, sounds good though. And, well, it does, but okay. Um, so that track went on the Maiden album. There were a bunch of other songs as mm -hmm. well, uh, and we went okay. Must get round to finishing those off one day. Then I went and did the Maiden album. Then I got diagnosed with throat cancer. Mm. That was a year to get rid of that, uh, and then it was a year of going absolutely crazy with Maiden to catch up on all the stuff we'd missed. And then the world caught a massive cold <laughs> and we all got locked up. Yeah, somehow. You know? um, so it, from 2014, it was seven years mm. before I could get back physically and, you know, with Roy. Uh, and when I did get back with him, uh, the first thing we did was write two new songs. So within a week, we'd written Afterglow of Ragnarok mm -hmm. and Many Doors to Hell off the mm. new record. Uh, and then we went back and looked at our kind of notes and sketch pads of the other stuff. Um, and that was started the process going. But during the three years or whatever, however long it was, of... of of lockdown, of not being allowed to do things, as it were. Um, I had a lot of thinking time on my hands, and the the idea of the one comic had <laughs> grown and developed into a 12-episode graphic novel. So uh, I, I didn't feel the need to make a, a concept album. It's not a concept album. Because the the comic is 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 the concept. The comic is the story. The the narrative. Um, the album is uh, kind of illustrates it in a way sonically, but it doesn't follow the storyline of the 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 plot or anything else like that. It's uh, it's a completely separate thing. 
So even though they share the same name, and actually some of the lyrics on the album are related to the comic, uh, it's not a concept album. Oh, okay. Thank you for clarification, because it was a question of mine. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Everybody asks that question, yeah. so I thought I'd get that one out of the yeah, way first. Yeah, there were rumors, so <laughs> I thought, let's ask it. Yeah, But, um, uh, there, there are clues. So if, you, if, if you, you, you can listen to the record, and you absolutely don't need to go and look at the comic. If you look at the comic, you absolutely don't need to listen to the record. But if you do both... Uh, There's all kinds of extra benefits because there's lots of little clues and things like that and little tricks going on with the lyrics and Easter the album cover and, and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. So cool. Yeah, little Easter eggs, yeah. Beautiful. I saw the video Afterglow of Ragnarok and uh, the first scenes from the graphic novel. Mm -hmm. Is it the beginning of the novel that we yeah. see? Or, okay. Uh, well, the, the, the one, that, that one, yeah. the, the, this one just here. Yeah, that's the first, that, book there was the special that we did for comic-con in sao paulo oh yeah where we launched the the, the video yeah um, and i did the first i gave them the first 16 pages uh -huh. of, of episode one uh -huh. um so episode one is like 34 pages so you, you get to 60 page 16 And, you know, Necropolis is just being thrown out of the underworld by William Blake, you know. <laughs> so, and, and then you need to know what happens next. We found Jack Nicholson in that novel. Have you seen him? I'll uh, show you. It's William Blake, actually. But yeah, It yeah, looks like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> so no, funny. Well, you mean Jack Nicholson looked like William Blake? Uh, yes, okay, for sure. <laughs> um, so um, let's come back to if... Eternity should fail and eternity has failed. Yeah, yeah. So is it the story of a loss or? Um, well, the, the, um, I changed the lyrics around a little bit mm -hmm. because by the time I got to the idea of bringing back uh, that song yeah. and doing it, redoing it as a solo uh, uh, song, uh, uh, I... Um, I, I wrote a, an extra second verse because Steve said, uh, I, I think the song needs to be longer. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I just stuck in an, an extra second yeah. verse. So I took that verse out because for me, I mean, I, I didn't necessarily, wasn't bothered about mm. the, the length of the song. It was quite long enough. <laughs> Roy did ask, he said, could I have an extra eight bars of guitar solo time? And I went, yeah, of course, yeah, shred away. So that's the some of the album has got like like Afterglow Ragnarok has a a, a very it's a real minimalist guitar solo. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other bits of the album where he just is like shredding like away. It's, it's great. I mean, so it's my, my favorite bits of the uh, the album is the is solo section on the on the Eternity Has Failed, and it is. Eternity has failed because um, what the Mandrake Project is offering is the end of death. Hmm. Would you say it's a personal album? Uh, yes, uh, all, all albums are personal. Uh, uh, this one is, um, uh, I suppose, more personal than anything I've, I've done. More raw in some ways mm. i mean a song like uh the last song sonata is just it's very very it's has a, a, a has an effect on a lot of people um which is rare mm. you know I and mean, people say oh i like that song or it's great or it rocks you know but sonata has a it's a really deep thing that happens with some people with that song and that's really rare you know so i'm i'm like that's great You know. And I'm really excited to hear it. I did not get the chance in advance to listen to the album. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, blimey. Yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. oh, dear. <laughs> well, I heard uh, Afterglow of Ragnarok, yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. But um, that was it. Oh, my God. I'm talking about all these songs no, in, that's quite, that's in, in fine. limbo. And you're like... And now oh. I have a yeah. 
some picture in my mind yeah. what it sounds okay. like. All it's right. beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much for that. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going on tour with the Mandrake Project all on your own. Yep. And um, would you say you miss the Maiden guys in the back when you're on tour as a solo artist? Never. No. Why would I? I mean, I'm, I'm not on tour as Iron Maiden. I mean, if I was touring with Iron Maiden and they weren't there, I'd be like, hey, where have they gone, you know? <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I've got the most amazing band out there. I mean, they've got Tanya, Tanya on bass, um, uh, you know, Roy Z on, on, on guitar, Mysterio on keyboards, Dave on drums. I mean, they all played on the album, yeah. with the exception of Tanya. But Tanya played with me when I did the... Uh, the concerto for group and orchestra shows earlier this year. Uh, it was the first time I'd met her. And she's an oh, amazing bass player, um, a really interesting human being. And I went, do you fancy coming out on the road with this project? And she went, yeah. So, boom, there we go. Beautiful. I'm excited to see her on stage. Yeah, no, it'd be great. I yeah. mean, I've, I've, I've been with her when doing a classical thing, mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit more restrained. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be fun to see what she gets up to when she's unleashed. I actually don't know what is going to happen on stage because I've never played with this band mm -hmm. before. So I'm, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm as excited as you are. <laughs> <laughs> it is biologically common that voices, singing voices, get weaker with age. When I heard the afterglow of Rock Now Rock, I thought, okay, this is the exact opposite how do you do this <laughs> what training is behind this uh no i don't know a certain amount of it is um uh, probably the way i'm made um and then a lot of it is uh trying to look after the bits that mm -hmm. you've already got um and uh, uh, other than that it, it, I think the the voice it does change mm -hmm. as, as you get older. I mean, there's no no doubting that. But I've been lucky that you know most of my highs are still there. They are. And we do all the Maiden show in the original key, all the songs and everything. You know, uh, and which is not to say that uh, you know one or two of the songs aren't quite challenging. But, you know, I have news for you. They were always challenging. When I was 25, they were challenging, you know. So um, the, the tone of my voice has changed a little bit. And in many ways, I like it more now than mm. I did when I was 23. 23, mm. I, was like, I, was like all, I was like shiny and squeaky. Yeah, but now it's kind of wise. Is it? No, not wise. No, it's kind it, of it, grown up. It's kind of no. Your voice becomes more lived in. You can yeah. do, you can express more emotion. Yeah. Um, you can carry more emotion. So, for example, there's a song on the album called "Rain on the Graves." I couldn't have sung that song when I was 22 years old in the same way because it, it, yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see how the kind of emotional life of the voice, you know, develops over the years. Uh, so that's the, the kind of the realm that I'm trying. I'm trying to extend the range, the emotional range mm -hmm. of my voice as much as preserve the physical range at the same time. Mm. But the voice is not the only thing. I must confess It's quite enjoyable to see you in ripped muscle shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so hang on the, a only This is... the only question is, do you ever have pizza? Ever have pizza? Yeah. You look so yeah. ripped and so trained. And how? Um, uh, I'm actually really not sure because I, I don't think that I, um, I... I maybe changed a couple of minor things on my diet. Uh, I don't eat as much bread. Uh -huh. But mainly that's because, you know, my, um, my, my, my wife is French, so I'm completely indoctrinated into the ways of French bread. Mm. And just like if I'd rather not eat bread at all than eat rubbish, <laughs> you know, like industrial bread, you know, yeah, like stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's, you know. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm sold on that idea. So I actually eat a lot less bread and... Uh, Uh, I try and eat a, a bit more protein than I used to. Um, 
And I do sometimes, you know, go down the gym and throw a few bits of iron around. Um, and I still train. I still train fencing. And people, I don't think people realise how uh, how physical yeah. um, that that sport is because you're, you're covered. You're covered in white and you're wearing a mask. So it's it's like people say, oh, oh Grand Prix drivers, you know, they don't they don't do much hard work, do they? Because they're all covered in a suit and mm-hmm. they've got a helmet on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they're losing God knows how many kilos of water and, you know, <laughs> uh, during, during yeah. the Grand Prix. So they work physically incredibly hard. Um, and the same thing on stage. I mean, on stage with Maiden, uh, I'm losing about three litres of water. Really? Yeah, during a show. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, uh, I, I probably drink a litre and a half or two mm-hmm. litres during the show. Yeah. And so when I go back to my hotel room, I'm still a litre short yeah. of where I should be. Yeah. So that I just gradually make that up, you know. Because you can't go, as a singer, because I sing, you know, you sing use my diaphragm and all the good things you should do. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's not happy if you chuck an entire litre yeah. of water into your belly <laughs> no, and then true. try and sing, you know what I mean? But what we see on stage is not a man who needs a glass of water. We see a, we He's a strong drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, we see a metal legend. We see someone who is strong, self-confident and all that. But behind the scenes... Are you talking about me? Yeah, I saw you several times. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm really sure. But behind the scenes, how did the Bruce Dickinson change over the years backstage? Ah, uh, uh, I think I got. Um, in some ways, I, I think I, I I I calmed down a little bit, mm-hmm. um, which helped me to be a bit more in 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 control of my surroundings. Yeah, and that and you end up that that's the sort of the basis of of being confident is that is that you you're aware of things that are happening. You know. Um, I still get a little bit spiky sometimes. I reserve the right to be passionate about stuff, you know, because um, you can't, you can't have, you know, you're you're a rock musician, you know, you're not a banker. Mm. Um, uh, it's like, a, oh yes, fantastic. we're a rock musician. We're just going to go and wander around and do this thing, and nothing's going to bother me because, you know, it, it's all about the money. You know, it's what the guys like that think like that. I, I don't. It's about the passion, and it's about the of everything. You know, um, and the fact that I get paid is, uh, I still think, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> It really is, you know. Well, I'm. I get, I'm, I'm, I'm a 65 year old man that runs around in tights, and screams at people, and they yep. pay me money. Yeah, hey! and they love it. Yep. What's, what's not to love? <laughs> I'm good friends with the band Lord of the Lost. Oh yeah, they went on tour with you twice. Yeah, and especially with the bass player. And he told yeah. me a funny story from backstage. Oh right, okay. He said it was in uh, the Netherlands or Belgium or what, wheresoever. Yeah. But he said he saw you. Uh, when you just unhooked and repaired backstage a door all by yourself. Is there a hidden talent for crafts? Ah, no, actually the opposite. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't trust me to um, rewire a plug. <laughs> um, but um, uh, I, admire, I admire good engineering. Mm-hmm. I do, I do. I mean, I actually have... A, I actually have a, 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 an aviation engineering company that I started, and uh, we take air, we take airliners apart, put them back together. I've got 150 engineers and mechanics working for me, and they're amazing, uh, and I'm not. <laughs> so I just go there and go, wow, I can't believe what you guys do, you know, and girls obviously because it's both. Um, But uh, no, you really wouldn't want me fixing a set of bookshelves. You know, it's just keep me well away from mechanical things. Yeah. Okay, so it's not crafts, but besides singing, is there another talent that nobody knows about? And we're just about to release it? Uh, no, I, I, I probably uh, not. Uh, <laughs> No, you're I don't funny. think so. You're so funny. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, the... I, I really can't think of anything else. I mean, uh, I I went skiing um, last year for the first time, almost the first time ever. And uh, I can tell you, I'm not very good at skiing. Uh, so I just get really good at falling over. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to bother doing that. I thought, you know, if I fall over and actually really hurt myself, I feel awfully stupid. <laughs> All right. So two last things. First one, what's the rock song of your life? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the rock song. Oh, the, you mean my, not my favorite rock song? Your favorite rock song. Oh, my favorite rock song. Yours. Oh, oh yeah. Um, um, wow, that was, uh, that's a tough one um, because I couldn't possibly tell you. Uh, I'll invent one. I'll sing the third. Um, what was the first song I ever heard that really blew my mind was um, uh, Deep Purple, Made in Rock, uh, Speed King. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the original Speed King, not the remix, huh. not the bit, because they've, they've messed around with it and done all kinds of remixes and stuff. The original produced by Martin Birch, 1971, whenever it was, you know, that, that one. Cool. Yeah. So the last question is not a question, but um, make a wish. What do you wish for? Um, I wish people would stop being horrid to each other. That's it. That's it. Said enough. Thank you so much for this wonderful, funny interview. Yeah. <laughs> I had the time of my life, honestly. It okay. was so cool. So. Wow. I must do it again and make somebody happy just by talking to them. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>